call the Board of Trustees regular meeting Monday, May 2nd, 2016 at 7.30 to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Approval of meeting agenda. Uh, additions and deletions. I'd like to add fire department vehicle purchase under new business letter A and slide the other three down if we could. That way we'll get you out of here quick, Chief. Thank you. I have two things. Um, so under E, It'll be set public hearing for the 2016-2017 budget. Public hearing. And then under F, um, the limestone recommendation. I was just going to cover that under my supervisor's report, unless you'd like it different. I'd Easier for you in the minutes that way. Needs to be in the minutes. Oh, that's fine. Minutes. Make a motion to approve the agenda with three additions. Or motion by Trustee Turchi, supported by Trustee Boyd. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Wow, I'm sorry, that's so bright. Hard to see. Approval of meetings. I'm sorry. Approval of minutes 44216 and 47216. Make a motion to approve the minutes from 4 4 2016 and 4 7 2016. Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Trustee Turchi. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Public announcement. Consent agenda are considered routine by the Township Board and will be enacted by one motion. According to established Township meeting rules, there will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the Board of Public so requests at a prior meeting in which event the Chair of the meeting may remove such items from the consent agenda for discussion and consideration under agenda item number 7 below. Approval of the consent agenda shall be by a majority roll call, vote of those present and voting. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Jerry, do you have a bill's amount? Do you want that oh, in there? That's right. Sure $208,431.60. I'll amend my motion to include the orders and bills at $208,431.60. Support. Thank you. Motion by Trustee Churchy, supported by Clerk Keith. Once again, any other discussion or questions? Deputy Clerk, roll call, please. Boyd? Aye. Churchy? Aye. Hottenbacher? Aye. Keith? Aye. Trump? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, letter 8, there are no items removed from consent agenda. Number 9, there is no unfinished business. Number 10, under new business. Uh, fire Department Chief, vehicle purchase. Thank you. I appreciate you adding that. Uh, everyone should have a copy of my letter dated today. Everything was finalized over last uh, last week. Uh, 
fire department established the apparatus committee several months ago and I informed the board a while ago that we needed to replace two vehicles, first one rescue two because it's the most needed and second um, engine tube that's operating on a station two. So we formed the apparatus committee which included myself, the assistant chief and captain, uh, two senior firefighters from the fire department as well as our fire department mechanic and over several meetings that lasted a couple months we developed a recommendation and a bid spec which I then put into a formal RFP and sent to three different companies and those companies are Kodiak Emergency Vehicles slash Spencer in South Haven, Michigan, PEL Custom Rest slash Rescue One there out of New Jersey and Pierce Manufacturing out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, page two, you'll notice that um, I've listed all the information, but before we get there, is after we went through all the bid specs, which all five of us did, everyone but the mechanic, um, first we were shocked at, uh, at, the, at the one price. I mean, really totally shocked. And the second one was pretty out, outstanding. And then we realized, uh, Marty and I spent I mean, page after page together on Friday. We spent the whole day Friday going through all bid, three bid specs. And um, we, weren't, we weren't really happy, especially with the company that we dealt with before, which was Pierce Manufacturing. It was almost like we got a, a computerized boilerplate and they put in just as little amount of effort as possible into the project. And we, we actually talked to the salesman on Friday and uh, said, you know, we were, we were really shocked at what we got. You've got items in there that don't even follow the RFP. Oh, well, you know, we use this computer program. And, and then another issue that really struck out and stuck out in our mind, it was going to take 17 months to build a rescue truck. And this is on a commercial Ford, F6, uh, Ford F650 chassis. And I, I says, we don't understand it. Well, then the big picture got to open the door. Well, they just received an order for 48 fire engines from Kansas City Fire Department, an order from L.A. County for 10 aerial, and so on and so on and so on. So where does the little guy fit at the end of the line? Well, we can't wait 17 months. We can't. I mean, Rescue 2 is in. It's in dire need to be replaced. And I, I take it on my shoulders. I should have done this a year ago. But be it that as it is made. So we went through all of them. And we kept finding some additions in, in both the specs from PL Custom and Pierce, things that we didn't even spec, they put in the spec. Simple thing, we were very specific that we wanted hydraulic brakes on this, on this truck. Okay, our mechanic said it's more than capable of handling what we're going to do with this medium duty box truck. We don't need air brakes on it. Pierce put in air brakes. Well, with air brakes, then you got an air container, and you got an air pump, and then you have an air shoreline. Well, all those things add extra money. Well, we can take it out later. Well, that's not what was in the RFP. So basically, they didn't follow the RFP, like I said, in the very first page. The RFP was very specific. Give me in calendar days, how long is it going to build this truck? And Pierce put in 17 months. PL Custom put in 16 months. Kodiak Emergency, they put in a specific amount of days, which was 240, which is eight months. And they said, probably if they got the assigned contract, and this had no bearing on our decision, but if they got a signed contract in the next couple of weeks, that time frame for build would probably be less than 240. Uh, if you go to page two, I really spelled everything out in detail for you and the difference in pricing. So for Pierce, they wanted three hundred forty-seven thousand, one hundred forty-one thousand dollars Loose equipment, equipment that we need to either replace or upgrade, we're including in the price of this truck. Okay, so when you come down to it, their total cost, $377,473. We only paid $410,000 for our last pump. So we really thought that was outrageous. Uh, their warranty was an also an issue for us on the body. That's what we're really concerned of because we're going to get a uh, warranty from Ford. Pierce is only offering a 15-year 
Well, this rescue truck's going to do just like the current one. It's going to need to last this township 20 years. Okay. PL Custom out of New Jersey, their price along with loose equipment, $366,667. They did give a lifetime warranty, but their build time was 16 months. And let me, I missed this on Pierce. The trade-in, Pierce is only offering us $12,000 on the old truck, and we know we're not going to get very much money. PL Customs only offering $10,000. Now, of course, I'm going to put this truck up for bid for sale. I'm going to do like we did previously. And if we could get better, more money than whoever we choose, uh, then that's how we'll do it. Then my final bid from Kodiak Spencer. $263,911. You add the loose equipment, that comes up to $291,523. Again, they have a lifetime warranty on the body. They have a build time of only 240 days, and they're giving us $14,000 for a trade-in. Adding to all of this, I came to me on Sunday, because this is a commercial chassis, I wonder how much we may be able to spend if we went to Russ Milne and go under county bid, how much we may be able to spend. So this is listed on page three. So I asked all three manufacturers to give me, deduct what it would cost Lennox Township if we provided the chassis. So um, two of them didn't get back to me until four o'clock today. Well, this, this was already done. But you can see the first paragraph from Kodiak Spencer. If we were to provide the chassis and purchase it from Milne and supply it to them, uh, our cost would be only $199,367. But of course, then we're going to be spending fifty-eight dollars or 60000 down in Milne's. So at this time, and this was a unanimous decision by all five members, John isn't a voting member, he's a recommendation member on, on the apparatus committee, but the five but three officers, actually four officers in uh, Firefighter Mayor's Act, unanimously recommended to me to bring to the board to request that you approve us purchasing the new rescue truck from Kodiak Spencer. And with that, if it goes to, um, if the board approves, I'd like to add into that, as we have every, every time we purchase a truck, approve 10% upfront change order approval into motion. That way if we have any type of changes, I don't have to keep coming back to the board. And, uh, I think uh, Karen Ottenbacher has sat on a committee before. Uh, Karen Turchi, did you, have you sat on an apparatus committee before? And this is a common thing that we've always done when I've come back to the board. And uh, the last thing that I can say about this whole project is, you notice I say loose equipment, loose equipment. In the past, every truck that we've ordered, and we've needed additional loose equipment. I've been able to go out to our regular vendors and actually purchase it cheaper and more cost effectively than these companies can do. But if they, you know, if I can't get a better price, then it's already in the in the bid spec. So I'll entertain any questions for you right now. One last thing before I um, NFPA re recommends any vehicle in the fire service that is 20 years old be reduced down to reserve status in any vehicle that is 25 years old or older be taken completely offline. Uh, we are replacing a 1995 vehicle. Okay, so that's 21 years old. So according to NFPA, that should be on the road as a primary frontline vehicle. And that is the vehicle that runs the most out of all seven apparatus because it runs out of station one on every call except the structure fire. So. I, I had a question for you. Um, when you go to the third, you talk about the third page, if you block the chassis through Russ Milne, but it's still, you're saying it's still 291000 Is it? Because he doesn't know how much Russ Milne he's going to get it for. Yeah, it says if cost. Yeah, Karen, that would be our cost, including loose equipment through Spencer. Okay. But if we were to go through Russ Milne, the paragraph above, the cost to Spencer would be 199367 without loose equipment. You'll notice I put that in parentheses right before it. 
So the loose equipment is 20, 27. approximately $27,000 from uh, Cody and Spencer. Yeah, exactly, $27,612. And the other two come in at $30,000 and change. So the you, got, you got the price of us providing, or you providing the chassis, but you just haven't gotten the price for the chassis yet. Exactly. So if it's going oh, to okay, that's, that's, what yep. I'm, that's what I'm kind of confused now because it says. I, I, had the, I actually had the salesman because this was a last minute brainstorm. What if we could, you know, if they're only charging us an extra 2000 or a couple thousand dollars to have it at the place you order, then it's not worth our trouble doing it. But if we're talking eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars difference, then it's worth my effort. And I actually had the salesperson from Millie in my office today. And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll put together all the numbers, but we need to get to step one first and that whatever Spencer is specking out for the Ford chassis, we would send to Milne so they could pair apples to apples and he would give me a detailed breakdown with a cost. So roughly with the 10%, in case of overages and stuff, what Denny is asking for is $320,675. Not to exceed. Not to exceed. If it came to the point, anything above what that you guys approve, the board approves, I would have to come back. Uh, I'm well, the predicting like in every apparatus we have purchased in the last 20 years, we've always come in under. So until you know what Russ Milne can offer, you wouldn't know what the difference would be. No, so. oh, it's only going to be less, not more. That's right, nice right. Care. I just yeah, because um, we did that with a company truck once. We bought it through the Ford dealership in in Port Huron, right. and then we had it outfitted by a special company. So sometimes that works, but. It, well, when we, when we purchased the new pickup truck three years ago, it's stickered at 58000 and change, and we only paid $39,000 for it by going through Milne under the government spec and all the rebates they had at the time. Okay, and a question for the Chief. I make a motion to approve the Chief to go to, through Kodiak Spencer to purchase the new rescue truck and not to exceed three hundred twenty thousand six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Clerk Keith. Any other questions or discussion? That's uh, Kodiak's Michigan, too. So yeah, that's, it's, yeah, it's in South Haven. That was the other plus that I didn't mention. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank I you, just want to say that the fire, the fire budget, actually Denny's been making sure that money is pulled out every year and put aside so there will be no loan. Right, no, we will pay for the whole thing. Same with the engine too, that's why we have the fund surplus that we do because we knew these yep. trucks were coming in. Uh, I want to thank you for adding this and uh, um, thank you for the support on the family issue. and. Uh, uh, Cam and I have already met regarding the roads, and so whatever he proposes is something we both agreed on. So, All right. thank you, and I'm going to head on out. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you. Letter B Assessment and Administration Services LLC Contract Renewal. <laughs> Mr. Machek, Mr. Griffin. Anybody have any questions for these gentlemen? Good evening, Mr. Oh, Supervisor. Good evening, Lord. Nice to see you folks again. It's been a while. We're busy. Uh, the basic contract is the same one we've had for the past several years. It was a small addition, and um, like everyone else, we have uh, health care costs. Um, our health care insurance goes up for the folks. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's a nominal increase. And we also included in this contract an extension clause going after that, the three years. So if you wanted to, you could just extend it rather than going through the whole process of permitting a proposal again. 
but uh, they, those are options they can change again in uh, the next three years. And then like all our contracts with all our communities, there's a 30 day in out for both sides. Uh, we uh, think that if people are happy with us, we don't want them to be stuck with a contract. Same with us. Um, that keeps it flexible and uh, it's worked very well with all the communities. So if there's any questions, I'd love to answer. I have a question for them, but maybe uh, Jody or Karen can interject on this. In the past three years, have we noticed cost-wise? Is it cost-effective using the company instead of having the in-house assessing? Because that, that was a big issue back then, whether it was going to save us money or cost us more. A lot of the other expenses are still there. You know, the um, legal fees for the assessing and so, I think it's kind of a toss up. And the only other thing that I would have to say, um, a year ago we put the admin fee on. That admin fee can cover assessing costs. So that helps us in that respect for that. But no, I don't think there's a big difference in you know what our expenses are, but because we have put the admin fee on, that helps us relieve us of some of that. Okay. Thank you. For those that deal with them, or more usury than obviously us, are, have there been any issues to speak of? Any major, I shouldn't say the little, I mean there's always a little, yeah. that's going to be everywhere, but anything major that could I'm, be I'm probably, our office is the one that is, uh, works closely with Tom and um, Seth and Christine, and I have had no issues. Um, the only problem that I have, and Tom and I kind of talked about it today, and we think we might have it worked out, is I have not yet settled with the county. I have my appointment tomorrow. I have never been this late in all the years I've been here. I did have an issue that I don't, I didn't understand why some of the other communities that you people worked with have already been down there and they're throwing up my face, oh, I've been settled with the county and I couldn't figure out how that could happen when I couldn't get my numbers. But um, Tom and I talked about it today. He was telling Kathy and I about a situation that maybe we can work out, so. Yeah, and Tom and I talked about that too, and it, it's a tough time of the year, but I think uh, we could pull probably pull someone from our staff and get them over here, and maybe we could just make it a point to make you first every year, because it just it's a matter of taking someone specifically to put that worksheet together, because the board of review numbers need to be you know, especially the AMR situations that we have going on, but I think we can definitely accommodate that and make sure that you're first every year. Just not <laughs> <laughs> Can you put that in writing? Well, like I said, gotta live with the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> and we, it's like I said, no joke. it's a pain on the rear end. Listen to her because you're not getting your part done. We'll uh, we'll make sure that she is not bothering you in the future. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I can understand that because she's gonna be. <laughs> well, well, that's right. Right. So it's the terrible. next treasure. Yeah, it's terrible for the treasurer the way you drag it on and on and on. Well, the problem is, is it's it's during the board of review just ended, and there's forms and, and stuff that is required to be turned into the state at that time of year. And some communities, the treasurer does the worksheet. Some communities don't. But we can accommodate that. We'll take care of that. Just so you get it under control. Absolutely. It's just not. Once, once Tom, you know, told us today about that because. Right, um, and I appreciate that. I'm at the picky end. I don't want to be. I've been in here twenty, almost twenty-eight years, and I've not, as far as I know, ever done anything wrong yet. And right. I don't want to start now, but uh, he did explain. Yeah, how we we've got uh, employees that get things done very quickly, and sometimes there's errors we have to correct. There's nothing we can't fix. Right. We, Tom's at the other end. He's methodical and slow, and very much so, and doesn't like to make any mistakes. Right. And I appreciate that, but no, I, Christine's always very helpful with everything that, that we go to. And um, if I ask Seth something, he doesn't have an answer. He makes sure he, he gets with Tom. So I don't have a problem with that. This was the only issue that I had, and it sounds like maybe we got it resolved as of today. I hope. Yeah, it'll be resolved. Okay. Any questions? I think a 
last thing we want to do is do another RFP. So I make a motion to approve three year extension. Uh, is the 99900, does that include the 3%? That's that's what Actually, this for the 9900, I think, was less than 3% this year. We, in three years from now, if we decide to extend, the, the price would be 3% annually. Gotcha. And depending, you know, we can talk about that three years from now. We'll include for, at the cost of $99,900 per year for three years. That's the part. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Treasurer Ottenbacher. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. DPW seasonal personnel hire request. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Everybody should receive the uh, request um, for a seasonal position. Again, this time of the year, uh, spring is really uh, kind of head start on us again. Uh, like in the previous years, we'd like to uh, reallocate and rehire our seasonal per person. Last year, we hired Dolan, Dolan Bonikowski for the position. He, uh, he worked with us all season until he left for college. Dolan did a really good job for us, worked really hard, um, asked everything we, did everything we asked of him. Um, I did speak with him a couple weeks ago in regards to returning to fulfill the seasonal position, and he was interested. Um, so at this time, I would like to ask for approval to rehire Dolan back into the seasonal position, but at $10 an hour this year. What is the justification for the extra dollar? Two things mainly. One, we're not going through the retraining phase and rehiring phase, so he's able to hit the ground running. And two, to retain him and keep him instead of him leaving for something else in mid season. Is he all right with the nine that he was giving last year? I know it was tough. He agreed to it, and he fulfilled his ob his obligation to us. But I know it was difficult for him. I did some looking around, and the only other one that I can find that's hiring right now for for seasonal worker, ground worker, which and the description is pretty much what we do, is Shelby, which is a much bigger community, and they're paying nine eighty four an hour. $9.84. So just to throw it out there. And then those that they're also hiring just hydro painters and they're paying them $9.50 an hour. His duties would include uh, grass cutting, weed whipping. Um, I will tell you if anybody's ever seen that, that to find somebody at nine bucks an hour to weed whip those ditches. Some guys work hard and they work in some uh, when it's 90 yeah, or something. Sure. We don't have to retrain this guy. I, I, I like the fact that maybe we might be able to keep him for four years while he's in school or something uh, along those lines. Or if we went 950. That's what I was just thinking too. I mean, yeah, he deserves a raise, but especially since we don't have to, like I said, retrain, he'll hit the ground running Monday. But we got to be fair to everybody else that works here, too. He does everything uh, as far as lawn maintenance and all. How much, like, painting hydrants and that type of thing? Did he help you with doing that? But this year he's going on. He's going to. Yes. Yes, this year we're on a rotation of paint hydrants. So he will he will be assisting in. And that's, that's one of those that we... Uh, Three of us, we can move through it faster. You know, said so that everybody's got a specific job and we can just, we can knock them out in a lot shorter period of time. So you know, I don't have so much of a problem with the $10 an hour except for the second position that you're asking for. So now you're asking for two people and we're adding $19 to 
to the payroll. That kind of makes it hard. This comes out of the general fund. This is not, you know. I understand. The reason for the, you know, like I, like I explained in my, in my letter here, you know, the reason I'm asking for a second seasonal person is, you know, the short work weeks, summer tends to be short, short enough, and especially with most of these individuals going back to school, we have a lot to accomplish in a short period of time. And if I'm looking to achieve and try and complete these things, it would be much, much advantageous to have another person. You know, what's the total time of the seasonal workers camp from what to what? Uh, I'm trying to remember when Dawn had to go back last year. I think it was the end of August, wasn't it? So three months. Yeah, I was going to say it's beginning of September, but I think you're right. They ended up going back in the August. So a little over three months, we're looking at seasonal help, and you know, as I explained earlier too, we have we have one person in that department right now um, that's that's been available for the last few weeks. So I uh, I don't like a person running equipment by himself or being in a building doing heavy equipment by themselves. I don't think it's a safe safe scenario. Yeah. And Dolan is starting Monday, so that would take care of that concern. Once again, he's going to put him to work. He's going to be cutting grass, doing things. That could be somebody with him. Is, 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 is the reality that if, if you got another person, nobody would ever be doing anything by themselves in your garage again or cutting by themselves ever again? No, um, theoretically, and that's kind of my, my thought is, you know, instead of having one three-man crew, we could have two two-man crews. How much are you going to actually be able to do any of that? What's the, which part? Going out and doing lawns and that kind of thing. Well, I'm hoping that if I can set up a whole other crew, that I won't have to do lawns. I'll have a crew to do lawns, and we're able to do other maintenance items specifically with the water sewer system. And the second person will help with that. Maybe some of it should come out of the DPW money. If we can do that, I'm okay with that. And like I noted on um, in my letter, you know, this person will be on an as-needed basis. I, I, you're gonna have a hard time finding somebody that you're saying it is one or two days difficult. this week and one next week. And well, to be honest with you, it's very difficult to find somebody even at just 30 hours a week. Extremely difficult. Sure. What, we can't afford to have what if, what if, one the whole time either. Well, what if we went, instead of hiring another person, a fourth person, start working Fridays? I'm just throwing an option out there. I mean, that's going to, that will extend the amount of time you get to, to do things. Just the DPW, not everything. I'm just tossing it out there. I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know how that works with the books. Well, my other thought was, and I know we've discussed this previous years, is hiring an independent company to come and do your lawn mowing, and then you and your person can do what you got to do on the DPW part. Would that be cost effective? The last time I did that exercise, it was not. That's kind of a matter of opinion. Um, you didn't put in everything that goes along with having you, you know, the full time people when you did that cost analysis. So I don't know if that's a true statement or not. You know, because it hasn't been done in a few years. Um, but at this point in time, get something like that set up.
So in other words, the second person is going to be working 30 plus hours a week? Not necessarily. I think he would be able to coordinate that. And I, I did pose a question to uh, uh, Attorney Jopic too, if we, if we were able to hire somebody, right now we don't hire anybody under the age of 18 years of age. Um, if we could hire a 16 and above, if it meant somebody just cutting grass or weed whipping. So you're going to check into that. We're going we're gonna to find out about that. Yes, I'm going to uh, confirm with uh, Labor Council Laura Amps Bugler of our office who has expertise in that area. I, I, even with an approval, I, I think this is going to be very difficult to find somebody um, that's going to be willing to do that type of work uh, for the short period of time. Uh, How old is he? Donald was 18. He is 18? Yeah, so he should be 19 this year. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a. Uh, that was listed in the advertisement that they had to be at least 18 years old. And that was always my understanding that you know, if they were under 18, that there was a problem with them operating equipment. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure we don't want them running the big stuff. Sure. Just talking a, a lot more on a weed whip type situation pulling weeds and things that, that that job would be specific to. So I, I just think we're going to have a hard time. We, it was, we did not have a lot of applicants the last time. And, and typically the applicants we got as soon as they heard the days worked and the amount. Right. I mean, want the job. You know, part of the, part of the, the, the position and the, and the job that you want me to do is to run this department and also to explain the needs and and things that uh, go along with that. The second seasonal position is a need that was identified, you know, with everything as a whole that's going on. Right now I'm asking to advertise and seek applicants for this position. If you're uncomfortable making this decision at this point, let's advertise for the position see what kind of applicant pool we pull in. Once we get our season going, I have to come back to you to get approval for the hire of a secondary person at that time anyways. I'm looking just to try and perceive the possibilities that may happen coming up. How many hours do you think you'd like to have the third person there, or technically fourth person? I mean, are you looking at like maybe two days a week? Two days a week would even be helpful if I can find an applicant that's willing to, to just do two days a week. You know, because there are still are days where I'm doing administrative duties that I'll have to find something else for that person to do while I'm doing that. Jody, where, where would the money come from for this? Do we have it? Like you said, it's actually $19 an hour. Right now, both the seasonal and Patrick are paid for out of the general fund. So it would be coming out of the general fund. Anything I cover in the general fund is supplemented by the PTA fund. And it's not interesting. It's taken from the general fund savings account. That is shown in. What is our other revenue fund? Pardon me? Our other revenue fund is the PTA fund. Yeah, we also have a savings account. Correct. For the budget, for the general fund. Correct. That covers when we overdo the operating.
Well, I think the key might be being very honest with that because, like you said, it's hard to get them. I'm saying to advertise maximum three days. And that way, you're not, you know, they're not thinking they're going to get more. You're not going to be bothered with people that are going to come in, spend your time on the interview, and then all of a sudden not want it because it's not enough. Sure, sure. And so, I mean, tell them maximum three days, nine dollars an hour. And, and you can ask Karen because Karen said that said in on many of the interviews. It's usually the first statement I make after introductions, right? As far as what the job is and what the specifics are. And we've actually had people go, oh, I didn't know that. And it was clearly in the advertisement. Right. And so I'm yeah, sure. sure that, you know, yeah. in less than five minutes, and they're, they're back out the door. And even going through the last process, we had a gentleman last, how many days? Two weeks. Was it two weeks? I didn't think it was that long. But I think it, it, it may get like a retired person or somebody like that, and if they know up front that it is only, you may find somebody that way. But somebody that actually wants that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want a full time, but they could use a couple of days. So I don't know, maybe that's what we should do. I don't have a problem with Dolan. You know, he was a great worker and that. Yeah, he was. And, and I agree with Karen, you know, give him 950, that gives him a little bit of a raise. And then advertise for the other. Make sure it's in there that it's, you know, not a full. Like you said, you have a hard time finding people for 30 hours. Sure. And and to be honest with you, once we get past some of these uh, larger projects, you know, that's when the, the, the largest need for that fourth person will be gone. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we hire Dolan. For his last name, Markowski. Markowski. Um, rehire him for nine fifty per hour, and advertise for another seasonal person at nine dollars an hour, maximum three days per week in the advertisement. Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Trustee Churchy. There are questions or discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Backup inspector hire. Um, everybody should have the uh, email from uh, building department to the life Science board. Uh, it's for a plumbing mechanical backup inspector. Um, it's asking the board to consider Kelly Smith. Uh, he has a credential and has been recommended for the position. Um, Dennis Lemieux met with Mr. Smith last Thursday. Uh, he seems to have a pleasant demeanor and uh, he thinks we'll work well with the residents of Lennox Township. Um, I, had, I had Dennis interview the individual and give his recommendation because he'd be working with him hand in hand with the building department. He is recommending uh, Mr. Kelly Smith for backup to Mr. Penovich. Where is uh, Mr. Smith from? His name sounds familiar, but I don't. Um, East China. Okay. His address on the, his uh, residential uh, department of license, residence code office, official inspectors, uh, East China, Michigan. His name is familiar because this one that was presented before. That's why I thought. Any questions? This. This is the one I believe too that Steve Penovich recommended to Dennis Lemieux. Uh, we actually had Dennis Lemieux in every also. Strictly a backup. We've been talking about needing a backup for some time, so I'll make a motion that we take uh, Dennis Lemieux, the building official's um, recommendation to hire Kelly Smith as our backup for plumbing and mechanical inspections. Support. Thank you. Motion by Treasurer Anbacher, supported by Trustee Boyd. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Letter E, um, set public hearing 2016 2017. that we set the public hearing for the 2016-17 budget.
for the regular scheduled meeting of June 6, 2016. Support. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Trustee Churchy. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Letter F, limestone recommendation. Who supported that? Karen. Okay. All set. Okay, Letter F, limestone rec uh, recommendation. Um, once again, we received three miles um, for the limestone program at a cost of 10% to the township, 90% to the county. Um, uh, I received this from Cam Trombley. Recently, he had a chance to drive the gravel road portions township this week, and typically he re confers with Mr. White and Mr. Fouché uh, to find out which is, you know, the highest uh, uh, needed areas. Um, he also conferred with the supervisor at the New Haven uh, yard from the Cone County Road Commission. Um, and the three miles that they came up with, number one is 31 mile road from the Richmond city limit west to Low Plank Road, one and a half miles, correct? And, and Cam Flick, come up here for a second too. And then number two, Forest Road from Richmond city limit south to intersection of 31 mile, it's 0 0.5 of a mile. And number three, 30 mile road west from Grash at one mile. Um, there was some that overlapped that had been done in I think 05, if, if it wasn't mistaken, on our map, but these are need immediate, they're immediate concern. That is correct. Uh, uh, number one, uh, the 31 mile road section from uh, from the Richmond city limit going west to the intersection of Low Plank, that was done in 05. That was one of the very first sections that we had done in the past. Um, but over the years, a lot of traffic, um, different ground conditions, um, that road is in dire need of another application. Um, we did receive, uh, not only us, but the road commission did receive numerous calls and complaints about that section of the road. And not so much this past winter, but the previous winter where we did have heavy frost, um, that road was almost untravelable at times. So um, we deemed that that was a high traffic or a highly needed area that uh, needed this limestone. The second location, uh, Forest, um, from the Richmond city limit to the intersection of 31 mile road, is actually a small Y section. Um, it does equate to about a half a mile in total. So it will not only be the grass ship, or I'm sorry, the forest section from the city limit, but also include the little section of leasing. Um, the third area um, was uh, 30 mile from uh, grass ship going west, approximately one mile. And uh, if you kind of look at the map, uh, hopefully that kind of starts to set us up to help start boxing in areas to keep continuing with this project in the future. Finishing off areas, connecting other applications to the new applications. As well as that short section, especially to the forest, um, does have a high traffic count area and does get beat up tremendously. Any other questions? Um, I'd like to ask a couple of residents a question. Mickey and Kirby, what's 28 mile been looking like? 28 mile? On our side? Is it 20? Yeah. It's okay. It, it's, yeah, it's not bad, really. And I know for a while there we had that sink swamp area. Yeah, I don't know if somebody came through and put some kind of black stuff. Did you see that, Kirby, on 28? I have no clue what it is. Okay. 28's been good, and, and we just did an application on fog frost not too long ago, too, so that's really been yeah. helped that area. That's yeah, good. actually with 28 Mile Road, uh, I believe it was two years now, um, the Road Commission actually did ditching on the north side okay. from uh, from Grashit all the way to the Salt River because there was no, there, there was an, an existing ditch. So a lot of the water would lay not only what was left of the ditch, but part of the road. That road would never dry up and heal. Yeah. It's the first year you can see the difference, but it was not healed. And every year it just is continuing to get better. I know because there was times when I'd be driving to go to the 
fire steak stakeout, it was like, am I going to make it through this road? You know, so sure. I didn't know how. It, and it, they were crowning it wrong for a long time. And just want to make sure that was taken care of. So, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I make a motion to use the DPW's recommendation for limestone recommendation. Limestone uh, deployment application. application. There you go. Um, for 2016, the three miles recommended. Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd. Supported by Trustee Turchi. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And, and you? just on a quick note, uh, last year we did do the sectional frost road with the limestone, and we also discussed about ditching. Um, when I did meet with the supervisor over at the road commission, uh, I did bring that up and he pointed to me, he goes, it's, it's on the board. He goes, we're, we're still just struggling. And it was, I, I, I did see it. Um, but they just, you know, they struggle because of other things that come up to get to that project. But it is, is still on their radar. But I, I can honestly say I, I did physically see it on the board. We did yeah. initiate, when we initiated our limestone program mapping, we did initiate a ditching program with Mr. Hopner that we wanted to get more aggressive with it, and it's it's time and money permitting. So we've got things on the radar. Um, we're in contact with them. It's their resources, whatever they can get to, to do it, they're going to do it. So. Well, actually, the limestone program has been around for a lot of years, so the ditching was included. Public comment. Any public comment at this time? Closed session. Discussion regarding the purchase of real property. I make a motion to go into closed session for the purpose of discussing the purpose purchase of real property. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Trustee Churchy. Eight no, eight twenty. Twenty-two. Eight twenty-two. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. I'll, I'll roll call. <coughs> Deputy Clerk, roll call, please. Boyd. Aye. Churchy. Aye. Ottenbacher. Aye. Keith. Aye. Trump. Aye. Motion passes. Closed session. Motion by Clerk Keith. I think it's this one. Supported by Trustee Boyd. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. I make a motion that we authorize Steve Jopic from our attorney's office and Sir Red Safe from our engineering to proceed with negotiations of the property acquisition as discussed. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Trustee Becker. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Make a motion to adjourn at 845. Supported. Motion by Trustee Turchie, supported by Trustee Boyd. Did you get any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? being adjourned.